Welcome back, art friends, to Glitter and Glue with Mrs. Eichhorst. I'm really excited about this week. I say that probably every week because art just is so much fun. But this week is food week. So we are going to focus on artists that use food as their inspiration. And hopefully that kind of inspires you too. So we're going to start with the art of, and I cannot, I tried so hard to say his name, Dennis, and the last name starts with W, and it has a million letters. Just kidding. It has a lot, though. And I don't know if you can see this because the light's shining on it, but his inspiration came from fruit. Yum! So, that looks to me, anyway, when I'm looking at it, like real fruit, like a slice of fruit with maybe light coming from the back. And I thought, how did he do that? Was it a photograph? Did he, was he a photographer? But he was a painter, an American painter. And I will post his name and um, a link to his website so you can really take a look at his work. But he used fruit. So we are going to also use fruit. All right. So before we start, just like any other artist, we're really going to take a minute to look at a slice of orange. And really, all the citrus fruits are very similar. So lemon, um, lime, grapefruit, um, those are all um, perfect for this project. And you don't really have to have one if you have um, access to the internet, which you must because you're here with me now. Um, you can pull up his work and really take a look at the fruit. So here is an orange, and now what do you see? First of all, maybe the shape. What shape do you see? Yeah, it's kind of round, especially, and the slice is kind of a circle, right? But is it a perfect circle, would you say, like with a stencil or um, a computer generated? Or would you say it's organic? Yes, it's organic. It's not perfectly round. So I don't want you to worry, boys and girls, today if you don't have something that you can trace. If you have a paper plate and you want to use that, that's fine, but you don't need to because this orange is not perfect, right? It's beautiful in its own organic way. All right, what else do you notice? Mine's seedless, you're right. No seeds. Right, there's all those little sections. Do you see them? They almost kind of look like a flower all the way around with the middle. So, um... We are really going to try to achieve that same look, kind of like Dennis. And I have one sample already started. All right, you see mine. And I didn't make very many sections, so it's not very realistic, and that's okay. His art was called hyper-realistic, meaning it looked super real, like I said, like a photograph. I kind of thought it looked very much like a photograph. Mine is not going to be, and probably yours not either. We're going to do it a little more lighthearted and not worry about being super realistic. But I think next time I would add more sections because they sure have more. All right. We're also going to think about this radial symmetry. Now we know symmetry and things that are symmetrical, whatever's on this side is the same on the other half. So our faces are rather symmetrical for the most part, right? Um, this orange slice is also symmetrical, but it's radial symmetry because of the round, the circular shape. No matter which way you look, it's, it's the same, right? So you could spin it and it's still gonna be the same, all right? So we are gonna work a little bit on that. There's a little math for you today, that radial symmetry. Um, we are also going to um, talk about tint. When you take a color and you add white, that's called a tint. And a lot of times people get that mixed up with shades, but shades and tints are opposite. A color plus a little black is a shade, just like when the sun is behind something and it causes um, there to be some shade. Tint is the color plus white. So they're both really important for artists who paint. And in mine, you can see that the orange is nice 
orange. And then I added white plus a tiny bit of orange for the tint that goes around the outside. And these little sections always have a little bit in there. Mine is super close up and quite big, so my sections are, are pretty big, all right? I also added a touch of yellow because I feel like if you look at this orange, it's not just plain orange and kind of peachy. There's a touch of yellow in there, so I did add that on my own. So I made my tint on just this little scrap three by five card, and you can see my orange and my white and how I added just a touch. And I did that with one of my favorite painting techniques called double loading. And sometimes I call it double dipping when I'm with you all in school because we're dipping two colors, one brush, without washing it off, okay? And that way the paint kind of mixes. And you can see it, if I go a little bit close, can you see it? Right there in the end of my little paintbrush. So I'm gonna show you that. We're gonna work with tints a little bit. You can do the same project with crayon um, and just color with white and whatever color you choose, whichever fruit you pick. Um, but I'm gonna show you paint this time, okay? Even if you don't have it, just because it's kind of interesting and fun and when we're back together um, and I teach this again, you're gonna go, oh yeah, you taught us how to do that online. So are you ready? Let's get your supplies. First, you need a piece of paper and I recommend a square for this project because it just has such nice balance, right? It kind of complements our beautiful um, slice of fruit, all right? So a square would be great. If you don't have a square and your paper is a rectangle, the very easiest way to make a square is to fold your paper until this side, the bottom side, touches the side, it doesn't matter which side, like this. And now I know that if I cut along this line, right here, if I cut along this line, when I open it up, it's gonna be a square, all right? That's how I know. And I even have the, the little scrap to prove it, all right? So there we go. I don't know if you can tell that or not, right? So cut along that line. And if you don't have a square, you can use a rectangle. Maybe you're gonna add several slices because your paper is rectangle and it's easier for you. That's fine. You're the artist. You gotta kind of figure all that stuff out, all right? Next, you're gonna need a pencil so you can draw your fruit how you want it. Um, you could start with crayon if that's all you have, that's fine too. Um, a crayon to go over it, I really think um, it looks nice if we can kind of see the fruit better. So the crayon, even though that's not realistic, um, or oil pastel, it just looks nice. It kind of helps it stick off the page a little bit. All right, also markers, or if you have it, paint and a brush. And of course, if you have paint, you're gonna need a little water. Um, so let's pause, get our supplies, and meet me back here for a slice of fruit. All right, welcome back. Let's go. So I have a couple of paint brushes here, just in case, but all you really need is one and your crayon to get started. All right, I'm gonna use, um, this nice big black crayon so you can see and I'm gonna make my circle as big as my paper not touching the edges because I do want to have color around the outside to kind of make it pop but I would like to make a very big circle so probably for me the easiest way is to start with the letter C right and I'm gonna just start making my curve all the way around. I'm leaving a little space there. When I get to the side, I'm gonna leave a little space. When I get to the bottom, I'm gonna leave a little space. All right, so I have my C, and now I'm just gonna finish it. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect because it's organic, right? It's pretty good, and it connects. So I have my circle, that's step one. All right, everybody needs their circle on there. Step two are the little sections. And you can do it one way. Probably the easiest way 
um, would be to make another circle. I'll do it over here, but I'm going to do it a different way. So if that's my first circle, if you make another circle, you can just kind of do crisscrosses like a pizza. So that's one way and that would work, but then you don't get that nice little middle part. So you would have to draw that in, right? Because all of those fruits have that middle spot that really makes it look like fruit and not pizza. All right, maybe we'll do pizza later this week because we are doing food week. All right, so I think it's easier to just decide that the first section is going to be at the top. So I'm going to make a curve and I'm going to kind of follow this curve. So I have a little bit of that skin that you peel, right? Um, and then I'm going to come toward the middle and I might even make my middle section so I know where to stop. So I'm going to come down to that diagonal like a pie and down to that like a pie and stop. Now the next one is not going to actually touch that line. I want to leave a little space for that little bit of white or tint, right? And I'm going to do the same thing and it's okay if they're bigger, littler, in between. But I'm going to go all the way around like that. All right, and just keep going until you run out of, it almost looks like a, the bike wheel, until you run out of orange. All right, so keep going right next to, you're making kind of these sort of triangle pie shaped shapes, and it's okay if they are different sizes. It's symmetrical, but it's um, radial, right? It's going to go around and around and around, so it'll still look even, okay? So there you go. I think this is already looking way better than my other one. Um, so the first one of yours might not turn out your favorite either. That's okay. That's why artists try, and they do new things, and they just... Keep going and I have room for one more in there. I'm going to squeeze it in and if ever you peeled an orange, you would know that they're not all perfectly the same size. So there we go. Now mine did not have any seeds, but I think seeds look fun in there. So I'm going to add my own little seeds and those are kind of a teardrop shape. So hopefully you can see those in there. They don't all have to be in the same spot. But if you put one in one slice, you kind of almost have to put one in another. So that's up to you. You kind of get the idea. All right. And then I'm going to sign it because I don't like to sign it after the paint. It's kind of hard to do. So I'm going to sign it in a tricky spot. Like always, my initials, you can sign your whole name. That's up to you. All right. If I went too fast, don't forget, you can always... Pause the video, all right? But now I'm gonna start with the painting. And the last one I made was the orange. This time I kinda wanna make a lemon. So I'm gonna go with the yellow. And just like the orange, the lemon is um, darker on the outside or more yellow, brighter. And then on the inside is when the tints kinda come into play. So I'm gonna do that first. So I'm just going to take my nice clean paintbrush um, and dip it in my yellow and I'm going to go all the way around the outside edge and I'm not going to try to be perfect because <clears throat> real fruit isn't all perfect. It's not uh, computer generated, right? It's just organic. So I'm just going to go all the way around. So whether you picked a lime or a grapefruit, ooh, that would be fun. That would be kind of pinkish, right? I'm just going to go all the way around the outside edge without really touching the fruit. And it's okay if you go over your line a little bit. That line's just to give a little definition. All right, so that's the most yellow. Then the inside of the lemon is also pretty yellow, but not that yellow. So I'm going to get my little card and I'm going to dip <clears throat> my brush in and put some yellow right on my card. Just... I dipped it in, and I'm always trying to show you guys this. Maybe this will come in handy. I can show you the video. I 
kind of press my brush on the paper and twist it. And a lot of the paint comes off that way, all right? So press and kind of twist, all right? Now it's almost all the way clean. And because I don't want to mess up my white, I'm going to um, set it down and I'm going to grab a different brush for that. I'm going to grab some white and I'm going to also put it on my paper. Press it, twist it. All right. I dipped it again, press it and twist it. And now this brush I'm going to actually going to use. <clears throat> okay. Are you ready? So a lot of times people try to put the white in their color and it just doesn't work. It's like, oh, it takes so much white. That's because white is not very strong. Your color is always going to be more powerful. So um, that being said, you're going to take a little tiny dot of the yellow, dip it then in your white so that there's more white than yellow. It's double loading or double dipping, and you can start coloring your fruit. So I'm gonna do that next, all right? And the yellow will just kind of come through. And if you say, oh, that needs more, then just dip it in yellow next time. And while you're painting, um, you're gonna just kind of mix it right on the paper, all right? So you're mixing not on here, but on your paper, and it gives you really a nice um, white, little dab of yellow. It gives you a nice blend. It's not um, all exactly the same. And if you look at a piece of fruit, it's not either. So that's also very realistic then. So there's a little more yellow there, a little more white there, but that's real. That's how it is. All right. So I'm going to go with the white first, a little dab of the yellow to get that going. And I'm just going to keep painting my fruit all the way around. All right. I'm going to do a couple more sections and then I'm, we're going to talk about the background. All right. And then I'll finish it off camera so you can have time and not have to watch to finish yours. And then hopefully you're going to send it to me or post it on my Glitter and Glue with Mrs. Eichhorst Facebook page, or you can send it in my email um, so that we can see and share it with each other. By the way, everybody loved your artwork in the art show. It was amazing. People are still telling me how wonderful it was. So nice job, boys and girls. Thank you for sending me all that beautiful work. I really think it cheered a lot of people to see how much you've been working and creating. And it just kind of got everybody's mind off of things for a minute. So that was great. All right, so there's my three little sections of lemon and it looks pretty yummy doesn't it so far and there's more bright spots there's lighter spots and that's okay we really kind of want that to be the case all right because real fruit is like that it's not exactly uniform right we're not computers we're painters all right <clears throat> for the rest of the rind or the um peel of the orange. I would also um, use white. I just gave myself a little blob because we're working so hard here. I need a little extra. And a, again, a tiny, tiny touch of that really light little bit of yellow. And I'm just going to go in and down. And that should really be the lightest color. So that one's going to be mostly white, hardly any yellow, but it's still in there right and you can do those on your own as well and the seeds same thing so on its own it's kind of a you know not boring but plain um painting until you get to the last step and that is picking the background color on this one i chose um blue and the reason because blue is opposite the color wheel from orange and I should have my color wheel here shouldn't I oh my goodness how did I forget it but never fear it's close by so here we go there's my orange right here and right across 
the road there, right across the circle, is the blue. So this time I chose a yellow fruit, right? So if I really want my fruit to pop off the page, what color do you think I'm going to use for the background? Yes, violet or purple. So to make mine and finish it off, I'm going to get a little bit bigger brush and I'm going to grab my purple paint. If you don't have purple paint, but you have red and blue, you can mix your own, right? And I'm going to paint the whole background a really nice purple. And that's going to give this a lot of pizzazz, a lot of pop. And I think it's going to be really, really beautiful. So boys and girls, I can't wait to see what you come up with. Send me a picture when you're finished. I will finish mine, like I said, off camera. And I'll post it for you. Um, thank you for coming again to Glitter and Glue. And I will see you later on this week with another food project. Okay? Bye for now.